All right, I'm here with uh, Fernando Alvarez, principal. Fernie. Oh, Fernie, Fernie. Yeah, Fernie Alvarez. Uh, Fernando sounds like you're mad at me, Juan. That's <laughs> like, I say, when anybody calls you Fernando, it does like... It does. Uh, it, it triggers you. It's like, oh, man, that means I'm in trouble. Dude, I'm going to change it on my signature. You should. You should. If Fernie is, is very inviting. It's, it's, it's Fernie. Like, yeah. I don't, honestly, if I'm at a park and you say Fernando, I won't turn around. <laughs> All right. If you say Fernie, All right. I will turn All right, around. Good, good. So let's let's talk a little bit. We were talking off camera um, about artificial intelligence mm. and how that's going to really. I don't want to. I don't want to say revolutionize, but you see the incremental changes happening already. I, right? I, I I don't. I will not disagree that I don't think revolutionize. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're too far off. Yeah, it's just that that things are happening so fast, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you just think about like what what phone were you using ten years ago? Like you know, you were you were using a, a phone that looked like a candy bar, and you were playing Snake on it. Flip flop. And now we create content with this. It's the, powerful. I mean, the phone is the most powerful tool. Uh, you have a computer on the, in your pocket. The, I mean, dude, just walk into a restaurant. And I hate to say this because I'm against it. I mean, I I have certain rules that, I, but everybody's on the phone. Yeah. You know. So we were talking about how um, in the trucking industry. Yeah. There's huge changes that are going to be happening because there's, what was it that we were talking about? Cloud-based trucks. Trucks that were driving themselves. Technology is literally taking over all industries, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, companies are really evolving with technology. Uh, and I can tell you that insurance is really benefiting off of AI, artificial intelligence, and, and data. Um, for the, I mean... I've been at this for over a decade, and I've never seen such an emphasis on really having solid data, really concrete data. And the reason why this is happening in whether it be the trucking uh, marketplace or whether it be on the, in the real estate marketplace or, 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 or other different industries is because you're literally grabbing this data, right? And you're putting, a you're putting together a nice submission, right? It's what we call the insurance in the insurance business, uh, and all this data is being plugged into AI software programs that now spit out a rate for the risk. So it's really become a game of who's got the better data, who's got the better information, and and relationships as well. I mean, the relationship factor has not gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of underwriters that work off of productivity on their book of business. Uh, always have a little bit of flexibility on their books. So to simplify that, think about it this way, right? I, you have, call it a big asset, right? We'll call it a big building, right? And you, you plug in all this data. And this data is now plugged into a software program that spits out a rate. And that depends on how the asset modeled. But the model, right? is driven by the data that you provide that you have to plug in the correct stuff in the equation or it doesn't go correct mm -hmm. and then the respected underwriters receive that data back that that model mm -hmm. which spits out a rate we'll call it you know what the cost of the insurance is going to be and then they're able to determine from their expertise and experience they have flexibility of then okay AI is telling me that the rate is a dollar. Mm -hmm. I have up to 50%. Why should I write it at 60%? That's where mm -hmm. the negotiations really happen. Mm -hmm. But it's really becoming information. It, I mean, it's all about data. AI is driving the insurance marketplace unlike no other, uh, especially in the last three years where we've had horrific storms uh, um, globally. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so let's talk a, a little bit more about like the data and, and AI and maybe how that's going to change the claims process. Mm. Because now you're going to have much more specific data on a loss, much more specific data on the cause of the loss, and uh, much more specific data on the frequency of the loss. Yeah. So how is that? Is that going to expedite the claims process? Well, I can tell you that telematics. Mm -hmm on the trucking side is playing a huge role in, in the claims handling process because you know you have video, sometimes you have video in the exterior part of, 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 of the automobile and in the interior part, you know, and video tends to be accurate, right? Um, and then you have drones coming into place, 
where you're seeing now, you know, I'll give you an example. I was at at a client's uh, facility after Hurricane Irma, and I see drones in the air. And, you know, people may not recall this, but the week before Irma, or the week and a half, we had Harvey hit Houston. So all the adjusters were that are that are allocated to respond to what they call catastrophe zones were in Houston, Texas. So we had drones flying over Miami and in the Keys, you know, looking at the losses and picking up data for the claims process because there was an ingress and egress situation where sometimes the city becomes inhabitable and you can't even get into the city. It's also why it's so important before, you know, we focus on this a lot. Anytime that we write a an asset portfolio or or, or any sort of asset that that needs uh, a decent, uh, you know, a, cl- a an, an upfront claims advocacy process, we always push the carrier to designate an adjuster to that real estate portfolio or to that asset because the unknown is if there is a hurricane, right, or an earthquake or or whatever. And you can't get there. Now, all that data, all that information has already been, you know, pictures, things that you don't think mean a lot mm-hmm. that go a long way. Yes. Uh, are already filtered in into the insurance company's software programs. And they're also going to have drones flying in and really yeah. seeing the site and trying to adjust the claim from, from the air. So literally, it's a fair statement to say that in today's market, artificial intelligence is your new claims adjuster. Correct. It, it's just, uh, at some point, it kind of feels like, um, do you think that there's going to be loss of jobs maybe in the insurance industry? You know, I'm such a, I believe in, in I, I'm a, I believe in the human, mm-hmm. and I don't think that nothing can ever, what's the word I'm looking for? Replace. Replace. Mm-hmm. A human being okay I mean I think people the personal touch uh, and insurance at the time of a crisis I mean there's nothing better than calling your agent or your your insurance firm and really having somebody to kind of just guide you through the process I mean I don't think I don't think humans want to call a 1-800 number and have a robot tell them everything will be fine we'll see you in 14 days mm-hmm. you know I think that having the human touch is something that we all want but yes, sadly, I do believe that there are certain jobs that are being replaced because technology uh, is now providing certain services uh, at a much lower cost and much and, and, and much faster speed. Yeah, because if someone, if you can do like an evidence of insurance mm-hmm. and it could just you well, just you, press a button and, and you took it, the you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about certificate certificates of insurance. Yeah, you know, two decades ago, a decade ago, human beings were processing were processing certificates of insurance. Nowadays, you go online. You know, you have all these different websites, mm-hmm. or we have like our our software program, and and it just spits Generated, it out. Yeah. It just generates it. So. So there's no demand mm-hmm. for for um, for humans there. Yeah, for da- data entry positions, not yeah. only in the insurance industry, but but yeah. just business. data entry is, is either technology or it's being taken to yeah. to or, another to overseas. another country yeah, yeah. outside. You know, it's not yeah. it's not domestic. So it's just right there. Just think about the the amount of jobs that that could be eliminated, yeah. just uh, on because I mean I did data entry. You know, I I was in the insurance industry before I was in this position for four or five years. Mm-hmm. I I produced evidence of insurance, and you know I had to manually type yeah. stuff in. But now you just put in the information once, and every year, I mean, that what'll change is maybe the premium or or the coverages, but yeah. all the other stuff is there. It's all there. It's yeah. all there. I mean, look, it's just artificial intelligence and technology is here, yeah. and 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 we've got to stop putting the band aid and. And saying, oh, it's 20 years away or it's a decade away. I'm here to bust everybody's bubble and tell you it's here. It's real. Yeah. However, however, I will go back. There is nothing like the human touch. And there are certain 
services that AI cannot replace that, that human can. And from an insurance perspective, we are in the service business, right? We are in the business of holding people's hand at the time of a loss. You know, for most Americans, a home is their biggest asset. If there is a fire or if there is a hurricane, you better believe that that homeowner wants to deal with a human being. That would be my assumption. Mm -hmm. Okay? I know I would. Yes. So, so yes, AI is here. Mm -hmm. We live in a data-driven world. Insurance is using modeling systems that drive and issue premiums. Mm -hmm. And the more solid data that you have and yet you provide to your agent, the better off you're going to be. So, a lot of times we call clients and we're asking for information and sometimes people just don't want to give you the information. I'm here to say that mindset and that perspective needs to change because the more information you're giving your agent on solid data, the better off you're going to be in purchasing insurance. And I really believe that we live in an era where you hire an agent to buy insurance for you. Listen to me. This is important. You're hiring me to buy insurance for you because you don't know how to buy insurance the way I do. I feel when clients call me, it's almost like I work for them and they've given me the responsibility to buy insurance for them. You're the representative. I'm the rep. That's all I am. Mm -hmm. I, I work for them because I know how to leverage the market. I know what to give them. It's a different terminology. Mm -hmm. It's like having an attorney on file. Well, now you have your insurance agent on file. That's what you're doing. You're hiring me, you're hiring Jag to buy insurance on your behalf because we know how to do it better than you can. The same way, we're not in the real estate business, right? So we hire, we hire a realtor, you know? I'm not a doctor, so we go to, it's, it's, there's no different You provide concepts. leverage that they, on their that own That they can, cannot, yeah. That they can, yeah. 100%. Yeah, because what I think a lot of people don't realize is I think people are still living in, in a previous era where they're like, well, if I withhold certain information or data, that, I, I got more vulnerabil uh, vulnerability. That's, like, that's, no, you have less. You have less. The more data you give, the better it is for you these days. Of course. That ship sails. Mm -hmm. that, that, that game of, you know, your company does, I own a restaurant and the agent asks you, okay, so what's your revenue? And your revenue is really $10 million, but you, you know it's based on revenue, the rate. And you tell the guy, $6 million? Dude, you're going to get audited. Yeah. They're going to get they're going to audit you quarterly nowadays. There's there's no there's no way to hide from it, so it's, you're yeah. better off showing the marketplace that you're going to be authentic and transparent and that you're looking for a partnership. And that's how you're going to build leverage because mm -hmm. look, I was having this conversation the other days. The insurance world at the top is like a pinnacle. It's like a pyramid, right? It it just gets smaller at the top, right? The guy who was running one company is now here. And this guy is now here, right? But this guy wrote your risk over here. Mm -hmm. And now he's here. And he's seen it here. And this guy didn't write your risk. Mm -hmm. And now, you, you understand? Yeah. They, everybody's seen it, guys. Yeah. Everybody's seen it. So, yeah. so The world's a lot smaller than you think. Correct. So there's a lot of times, like, you know, clients, and they call five different agents. We're all fishing from the same pond. Mm -hmm. Okay. We all have leverage in our own ways. Okay. It really becomes to Here's why you hired Jag. Mm -hmm. You ready? You hired Jag. Yes, we're authentic. Yes, we're transparent. And yes, we have leverage. But beyond that, the claims advocacy that we provide for clients up front is unlike any other. We are doing the underwriting for you up front. When I go to the marketplace and I tell an underwriter, we have visited the facility, we understand the, the scope of work, we understand where the money is going, here is your underwriting. We've reviewed their loss history, we've identified frequencies, we've identified where the shock losses happen, now they're like, okay, these people are for real. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Yeah. That's why you hire Jag. Yeah. And and it's considering the industry that we're in, claims advocacy 
it's not where it, it really needs to be. It's almost like we're, no, we're pioneering no, that. No, 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 no. Because everybody else is selling quotes. Yeah. We understand risk profile. Yes. You understand? Yeah. I understand, Jag understand a risk profile. There's a big difference. Anybody can sell you a quote, but what's mm-hmm. behind that quote? What does the language say? Are you even covered? Yeah. What are the exclusions? Yeah. Does the person who is looking at your risk really understand what you're doing? Correct. We start doing that months ahead. And we understand, here's another thing we've done at Jive. We understand certain industries and there are certain industries that we don't understand. So guess what we do? We know what we know and we play hard in what we know and we stay away from what we don't know because that's not our strength. Yeah. And that's being transparent and honest. Like if you, if you have a risk, you're like, hey, I know this risk. I know what the pitfalls are. I know the relationship that I can leverage to get you the best rate. This, this is everything that, that I could offer you. And if it's something that you're not, you know, you're going to be honest and be like, maybe it's a business owner that, that they're trying something new and they have a prior relationship with you, but you're, you're not going to fake being an expert in something. No, I'm not. I mean, I, I, I don't need to. Exactly. Uh, you know, we have a brand that, that and we, we, we got to do what's best. We got to protect our brand above all. Yeah. And we got to take care of our clients. Yeah. So like, I don't know. We know what we know and we know what we don't know. And we're, yeah. we identify that, you know? Correct. So, yeah, I think it's very important understanding the the strengths and weaknesses of your of, company of your company yeah 100 percent. so i'm gonna i'm gonna throw a little bit of a of a question for you going back to the ai let's say that these cloud-based trucks start becoming more frequent mm-hmm. what are the challenges that that presents for an insurance company because before a lot of the risk was ri- you know you looked at a driver's history you looked yeah. at, a, at a you added the drivers to the policy and that affected the rate do you see that this is going to make it more affordable for the trucking industry, which the truck- I I think we're still in the early stages. Um, there isn't enough data to support whether or not this is really gonna, actually really going to work, yeah. right? But there must be, and I'm not, I I I don't manufacture cloud trucks, right? Yeah. So I can't speak on their behalf. Yeah. But I will. I'm confident enough to say that they mu- they must have done a bunch of research that this is this is going to work yeah. to, to a certain extent, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how you what I think the challenging part for the insurance industry is, is going to be is how do you underwrite the risk up front? Because there's no data. Like, there's no, there's no loss history to support what you're insuring. So how do you, what's the measuring stick? Look, there's, there's guys out there that are brilliant actuaries, and they're going to throw in certain, they're going to factor certain things, and, and they're going to understand, you know, certain risk. I'm, I'm sure they're going to test drive these things across the country. There's going to be a lot of moving parts to this whole thing. Um, so I think the insurance industry as a whole, the, the challenge is going to become, okay, how do we do the upfront underwriting, you know? Yeah, because... And the upfront capital to invest in doing that underwriting. Correct, because now let's say 10 years from now, conservatively, there's the first trucking company that their whole fleet is cloud-based. There's no, there's no prior in- incident. You don't know what the risk really is. What if someone hacks into the cloud and then a, a truck crashes? What's well, the liability there? It's, it's, it? well, I mean, that, that's, it's crazy that you even said that, but it's a thought I had. I'm like, dude, can you imagine, like, mm-hmm. I, I hate to say this, but like a terrorist attack, like you, you, you know, you breach somebody's programming and you, and all of a sudden you have trucks, you know, it's co- a possibility you know, flying off the San Francisco high. I, I, I have no idea, but yeah, yeah I mean, it, everything's a possibility. And then is that, is that a cyber liability? Loss? Is that, it a fleet lot? Like, you see the lines? I, th- I think I would not be surprised if the insurance companies are going to collaborate cyber mm-hmm. with liability. Look, mm-hmm. in business, everything's negotiable. Mm-hmm. They're going to find the right language mm-hmm. to provide the right coverages. Yeah. That's the least of our concern. They're going to figure out a way how to do it. Yeah. Uh, I think the I think the challenge is whether or not this is going to work. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and I think... I now... Th- Here's the unknown. Does the owner operator get to sit in that truck? Because, you know, the owner operator, I'm a big advocate for the owner operator. Mm -hmm. I insure a lot of dump truck owner owner operators. Mm -hmm. And the industry has a stigma against these owner operators because of control issues. But I've always said that the owner operator, that's his office. That's how he makes his money. So not only is he a truck driver, he's a businessman. He's running his own business, right? So... He owns his own LLC. He's got to do his own uh, uh, P&L. 
Yeah. I mean, he's running a business. An that is his like livelihood. Yeah. Versus, yeah. if you look at data and you look at companies that own vehicles and give them to their employees, those employees sometimes don't give a shit. They crash them. They they don't they don't maintain they don't do maintenance work on them. Yeah, Why? Because they don't own them. They don't care about them. Yeah. When you own something, and you got skin in the game. The game changes. So, I'm always been I, I, I've always been a big advocate of the owner operator, and I think that the underwriting world should really switch their perspective on how they look at the owner operator because okay. they care for their units yeah. more than those yeah it's more it's it's like owning a home versus renting it correct you know you're gonna you're gonna take when you when you have skin in the game you're gonna approach it from a different angle correct so owner operators probably i mean should i don't know how much of a break they should get but probably that should be a consideration for underwriting and yeah. maybe that'll become a data point you never know. Maybe they'll look at data over a long period of time and say, "Oh, owner operators are are have less incidences." Yeah. And maybe that, but that's the tool. That's how data is going to help. Going back to clients giving as much it's, data as possible. It's all. It's all about data. Yeah. Data is the name of the game. Right. He who has the better data wins the game. Correct. And there's probably agents out there that are not asking the right questions. No, and, and I've seen this happen, and it's because there's a lot of agencies out there that are just pushing paper, mm-hmm. and that they're not they're not in it for the client. They're in it for for them. Yeah, they're trying to get a premium and then bounce, basically. They're selling quotes, dude. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't. We, li- we, we live in an era where you got to hire an expert. Yeah. And you got to hire somebody with, with a track record. You got to hire somebody who really understands, again, I use the word risk profile. You got to understand. And, and that's one thing that we've done is to, you know, it's, you know, 13 years in the making, brother, mm-hmm. we've paid our dues. Correct. You know, I can look at an asset and give you a rate without looking just, just because I know. Correct. So I can look at, I can look at a truck and I know, yeah. you know, that took me over a decade. It's like, it's like asking the guy who sells concrete. He just knows what the, his per yard cost is going to be because he just knows. Right. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that because it goes back to an earlier point that you made that people are always going to want the human touch because no matter how much data you have or how much AI you could use, that instinct, you can't manufacture instinct. And I think that that's very important when you're choosing, uh, you know, uh, an, an agent or any or for anything, any sort of expert. I can look at an asset and tell you who the three carriers are that will write it and why they'll write it, and and that's it. I don't need the whole marketplace. I don't care for the whole marketplace. So, All right, well, I, I think this has been a very beneficial conversation. Thank you Appreciate for taking it. the time, and uh, we'll close it off with uh, data is your most valuable commodity. That's in 2020. Data is the name of the game. He who has the better data wins the game.